Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our online service for this Sunday, the 17th of October, 2021. It's good to have you with us, wherever you're joining us from. It's good to have fellowship with you and to be able to share and uh, minister into your life today through this online service. We do have live services at the church at 9.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. every Sunday. And we'd encourage you to book for these services and come and attend with us. Uh, use the front page of the church website uh, to make your booking. We are encouraging uh, all our regular attenders, members, to start attending the live services at the church once again. To renew our fellowship, to celebrate and to worship together. So I look forward to seeing you. Uh, at the services soon. Now, last Sunday I started a brief devotion on the subject of strength in tough times. Strength in tough times. And we said together that life is tough and it is getting tougher. And I'm sharing with you some biblical principles for how to handle the emotional exhaustion in your life. The first one we looked at last Sunday was honestly tell God what you're feeling. Honestly tell God what you're feeling. And the second one today is this. Humbly ask God for strength. Humbly ask God for strength. We're emotionally exhausted because we're out of strength. And we tend to look for quick solutions or we look to other people. To give us the strength we need to tackle today's concerns. All the while, God is waiting to give real strength to us. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11, we read this. That we must pursue the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. Pursue the Lord and his strength. You and I need God's strength every moment of our days. We need to ask him for the strength. The Bible tells us that we don't have because we don't ask. More than 20 times in the New Testament, we're commanded to ask God in prayer. Remember what Jesus told us. He said, ask and you will receive. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. That's Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. So when you're emotionally exhausted, I would encourage you today, keep asking God for strength every day. How we thank Him for His grace and mercy to us in providing us with what we need. Now, as we come to our prayer time today, first of all, we want to emphasize prayer for our people. And we continue to thank God for Pelisa and the recovery that she has made so far. We continue to pray for Emmy. We pray for healing and recovery and also for encouragement for her. We continue to pray for Pietru and her family, particularly her son, John who is dealing with the diagnosis of cancer. Pray for Pat Mitchell. He's going to have his eye operation on Tuesday of this week. We continue to pray for Shannon's mom and Natalie's mom, the ongoing treatment that they are receiving. And then I want to encourage you today to pray for those who have had COVID, who have recovered but are dealing with long-term issues, often related to their COVID infection. One of them is Chris van der Merwe, and he has asked for special prayer for him because he has unusual fatigue and is unable to sleep. And in our discussion, and I'm sure this applies across the board to these folk that I've referred to, when we are low physically, we are also vulnerable to 
spiritual attack. So pray not only for healing and being able to deal with these symptoms, but also for spiritual strength and encouragement to withstand the attacks of the enemy. Now we continue to thank God also for the low levels of infection in our country. And we continue to pray that our leaders will have wisdom to guide our people in the right direction. We pray for peace in our land during the run-up to this election. We pray for an ongoing good rainy season in the summer rainfall areas of our country. And we pray for rain in the drought-stricken areas. We also pray for our young people and our students, our teachers, as they are in the last lap of the school year, which often involves a great deal of study and of writing exams. So we do pray for them. We pray for our church. We pray for our fellowship and our ministry together. We pray that the worship services that we are enjoying at the moment at the church would continue to grow in numbers and effectiveness. And this would be a, a wonderful means of us reconnecting with each other and with our church fellowship. We pray that small groups will start getting together. I want to remind you that we do have a prayer group at the church which meets on Saturday mornings at 7 o'clock. You're most welcome to join us for that. We pray for our youth and our children's ministries in the church. We pray for our financial commitments and partnerships. And I just want to share with you today that as we're heading into the second half of the month, we need somewhat of a financial boost to get us through uh, the month financially. And then we do praise God for our church family, that we're not alone, that we do have one another and we can encourage each other in the Lord. So with those items in our minds, let us turn to the Lord in prayer and praise today. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we have access to you, that we can come, even in the verse that we've read already this morning, we can ask, we can seek the Lord, we can knock on your door, so to speak. And we do that today through our prayer and our praise. We worship you today. We bow down before you. We humble ourselves before you because you are God and we are your people. We come, Lord, humbly as well because we recognize that we're sinners. We need your forgiveness and we thank you for it. We thank you for the price that was paid so that our sins could be forgiven. Lord, we also pray today for our people. We thank you that you're at work. We thank you that you are pleased to answer our prayers, to draw near to us in our times of need. We thank you, Lord, for the recovery that Pelisa has made so far. And we're praying for her for full healing. We pray for Emmy that you'd continue to strengthen her and encourage her every day. We pray for Pietru and her family, for her son John. Lord, going through this deep valley, having been diagnosed with cancer. For his family as well, Lord, we pray that you would draw near to them and that you would hold their hands. Lord, we're also praying for a successful eye operation for Pat. We pray that you would bring him through this with healing and recovery. We're praying for Shannon's mom, for Natalie's mom today, Lord, in their times of need, the treatment that they are receiving, we're praying for your peace and your gracious hand to be upon them. And then, Lord, we pray today for those who have had COVID and who are suffering long-term uh, fallout, as it were, long-term implications uh, from their time of infection. Lord, we pray for your gracious hand upon them. We pray that you would give them daily strength as we've been praying and been talking about today. Lord, we're praying that you would bring them ultimate and full healing 
and recovery. And particularly today, we pray for Chris van der Merwe and others like him, Lord, who are experiencing unusual fatigue and uh, a lack of being able to sleep. Lord, we're just praying for, for them today and for recovery and wholeness. Lord, we thank you for our country. Thank you for what you're doing in our nation, in spite of our many needs, in spite of our many troubles. We thank you that you have not abandoned us. We thank you that you're working in and through your church, in and through your, your people. Lord, we thank you for the low no numbers of infections. We pray for a greater increase in the vaccinations that will help us going forward. We're praying that you'll give our leaders wisdom restraint and uh, may they bring a message of peace during this run-up to the elections we're asking you we're thanking you for the rains that you've sent lord and we're praying for ongoing good rains across our land we pray that you would bring relief to our drought-stricken areas by providing the life-giving water that only you can give lord we pray for our young people today our students, our scholars, we pray for our teachers. We pray that you will strengthen them in these days for the last few weeks of this year's academic program, which brings with it study and exams. Lord, we pray that you would help them as it's been a difficult year. We pray for our church. We thank you for one another. We pray that our fellowship together would be sweet we would encourage each other in the Lord. We would point each other to the Lord Jesus during these days. Thank you for our partnerships around the world. We're praying financially that you would bless our church in these next couple of weeks as we come towards the end of the month. Lord, that through the giving of your people, the needs and the commitments will be met. And we thank you for one another today. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord... Our Heavenly Father, we think of those who are still afraid to go out of their homes. They feel trapped and uncertain. Loving God, would you give them peace and reassurance? Would you bless those who care for them in their vulnerable state, in their fear? We pray that they would be encouraged and strengthened. We ask that you would guide us in all that we do so that we will do what we need to do to protect ourselves and others, particularly the vulnerable from this virus and from all else that could cause them harm. We thank you today for hearing our prayers in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Now I'll see you after the song for the second message in our new series on spiritual gifts that I've simply questioned how does the church work how does the church work I look forward to seeing you soon until then God bless you and keep you